Welcome, Welcome to Sustainable, Sustainable Sailing. And in this video we're going to be thinking about anchoring and why we're making the radical changes to our foredeck which you see in this video up here or up there somewhere. So before we get stuck into the technical details of the changes we're making let's just start with why anchoring is important to us. Well think about being in the anchorage it's lovely, you're surrounded by nature, it's peaceful, you can see wildlife, you have your privacy. Those are really positive things and somewhere that's well protected as yes. well. Yes, recognising that we do want to sail a lot. So it doesn't matter to us if we're having to move around from one anchorage to another um, in order to be safe as the wind changes. We also really would like to sail and see the world. And we can only afford to do that if we are mostly sailing or anchoring, as marinas add a lot to the cost yeah. of living. So, in order to anchor, we need several things. First of all, we need an anchor. Good idea. And the boat came with a really corroded, quite small and very old plough anchor. Now we've been following some of the sailing channels, we'll link to them in the description, such as SV Panape who's do, been doing a huge amount of anchor testing. Also uh, reading from Attainable Adventure Cruising, a huge number of articles about anchoring. And one thing is clear, the new types, new generations of anchors are far more effective than plough anchors. And we've got some really bad experiences of plough <laughs> anchors, haven't we? Dragging up and down the Helford River in our first cruising boat, a little 21-foot Jaguar, I'm never able to um, get a proper grip. And so we've chosen a 30 kilogram spade anchor as being really well-sized for security for us. Then you also need chain. That can be controversial. Yes, and we've gone for uh, 80 metres of 10 millimetre chain, which is oversized probably for what we need, but we feel that the safety factor is a good thing. That's enough for maybe 15 metres, 50 feet of water. One of our sustainable aims is that we want to be able to sleep at night when we're at anchor, so we need to know that we can rely on our anchor, chain and the setup we've got to give us peace of mind at yeah. night. And talking about that kind of sustainability, another bit is the sustainability of our backs. <laughs> so yeah. we're not going to be able to lift the anchor onto the deck very easily and we're certainly not going to be able to pull all the chain and the anchor up ourselves. And that's quite a big change, what was expected um, back in 1977 when this boat was built. So the assumption then was that you would physically lift the anchor onto the deck and put it in an anchor locker um, whenever you were out sailing. We can't do that with this weight and size of anchor. And so like most boats today, we will be storing our anchor in the bow roller. But the bow roller that was there, it was just not suitable for that. The, the roller was too close to the boat and the, the anchor wouldn't be secured at all. So every wave it would thrash about and, and damage things. We're going for, and have gone for, massively changing the whole bow roller assembly. And we've got a local guy to do that. Um, in the boatyard, a small firm called Anglesey Fabrications, run by Keith, who has taken the original assembly and, well, he's changed about 90% of it to our design so that um, the roller is much further forward and the sides that contain it contain the anchor are much larger and extend further back onto the boat and that's why we've got to make these changes to how it's fitted to the foredeck. Mm. Yeah. We also couldn't access the original bow roller to maintain it either because it was uh, wedged yes. between the the, the, the boat has bulwarks boat. coming forward and the pin for the roller was actually hidden inside of those so we would have either had to cut the fiberglass to get the uh, pin out or take the whole thing off. Which when, we did. <laughs> which we did, but you can only do that when you've taken the mast down. Mm. And so that's another key feature of our bow roller is that the forestay is attached to it. And so part of the changes that we've also been making fit with a whole range of other things we'll be talking about in terms of shifting to uh, Dyneema rigging. So the work we did last weekend was our first step in 
securing the new barrel roller onto the foredeck and the space is obviously limited and there's a big triangular locker where the old windlass went so we need to, because the new barrel roller extends further forward and then further back to counteract the forces we need a longer space for it to fasten to so we're going to really reinforce the deck at that point so that it can be connected securely. Jane's background in civil engineering <laughs> means I have to make sure things uh, are going to be strong enough and tied together enough and so that's why we've come up with this large backing plate that isn't just to stop the bolt pulling through the deck but Underneath the, the whole of this triangle connects the hull deck joint, the old locker lid um, and so on all together as, as an integral piece. Yes, it spreads the load from that new bow roller which could be quite high as it's not only for holding our anchor, it also has some other... Yeah, uh, holds up the mast points. which is quite important yeah. too. We'll go into other videos um, about... Um, the wonders of FR4 and thickened epoxy mm -hmm. for um, creating new backing plates and, and tying things together in a, um, a much better way uh, than what we've had before. As we, you'll see in that video, um, we removed some old backing plates from the jack stays. They were ply, about a foot long, mm. a bit longer than that, with a, th a very thin sort of tin stainless but you mm. could just bend it with your, with your fingers and the wood was rotten the, the metal could just be bent so easily so that would have been a bit of a shock if you'd fallen overboard and your life harness had uh, put your full weight um, onto that then beyond this mm -hmm. we've still got to build what goes on top of the backing plate so that's hopefully weather permitting the next weekend's job um, and then all of this has implications for the rest of the foredeck, for the windlass for example, and then I'm um, down into the fore cabin where the chain goes because we have a far greater um, volume and weight of chain. So stay tuned, we look forward to seeing you and looking at these ways of creating a boat that is designed to live aboard and live aboard cheaply while cruising the world. Um, live aboard cheaply and be able um, to maintain it ourselves um, as we get old and decrepit. So uh, join us for the journey. It's good to see you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching.